Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord? Who shall ascend Mount Zion? Into that realm where you can walk with God, with angels and the spirits of just men made perfect. Who shall ascend? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart. You see, that's what the scripture says, you know, be ye clean that bear the vessels of the Lord. Isaiah 52. And uh, many things we got away with, we're not going to get away with any longer. But that's good. Because God's narrowing us in. On the 8th of June of this year, I'm, I'm, is it okay if I share some experiences, you know? Because some of them are quite important. On the 8th of June this year, I was sitting at my desk. I wasn't sitting in the usual place. I was sitting at my desk, but it was very early in the morning. And I just put my head down to pray, and I heard that word, come. This very specific, concise word, come. And every time I hear that word, there's a pull on my spirit. And if I yield to that, if I resist it, the moment passes. It's gone. I can't get it back. But if I yield to that come and say, yes, Lord, instantly I'm in another realm. And this happened to me and, uh, on the 8th of June. And uh, the Lord was walking away from me. When I, as soon as I was in this other dimension, the Lord was walking away from me quite quickly. And uh, so I began to run to keep up with him. And uh, I said to the Lord, why are you walking so fast? You know, the Lord does things as examples to us, you know, sometimes. I said, why are you walking so fast? He said, because the time is short. Tell my people the time is short. It's just a little demonstration, you know, of... And we walked for quite a long time. He never said anything. And I wasn't sure where we were. And we came to this gate which looked like a wrought iron gate, a lot of filigree on it, but a wrought iron gate and had a big padlock on it. And uh, the Lord walked straight up to this gate, undid the padlock and opened the gate and walked inside. And I was hard on his heels, walking in with him. And when I walked through that gate, I walked into a garden or a place where you could not imagine in the natural. It was the most incredibly beautiful place I had ever been in. It was like, oh, it was just unbelievable. The, the grass, the waterfalls, ponds with fish in them, angels flying overhead. You know, I've seen geese flying overhead in formation. Uh, these angels flying overhead, singing and worshipping in formation, you know. And uh, I said, Lord, what is this place? He said, this is another part of paradise you have not been in yet. I thought, wow, this is, this is something else. He said, it is my intention that my people have access to this place while they're still on earth. And I walked around that place everything had life and everything in the place was singing and worshiping God the flowers were worshiping God I looked at this flower this big have you seen those big sunflowers you know did you get them here it was like that but much greater the beautiful flower and I looked at it and as I looked at it I was drawn into it right into the flower and that flower was singing the most beautiful song you could ever imagine unto the Lord. Everything was alive in the place. Everything was life. And uh, I thought, my goodness. You know? And the Lord said, you know, this is what the Apostle Paul talked about in Hebrews 12. He, he said that he had access to this realm while he was still on earth. And he came here many times. And then he said this. Does not my word say that in the last day my sons and daughters shall see visions, dream dreams? He went through that scripture with me. He said, they can come here in their dreams. They can come here in their visions. Their spirit can enter this place and walk with me. He can come with me in the night seasons. And uh, 
He said, the limitations are not on my side, they are on your side. Then he turned to me and he said something which was really profound. Well, at least I felt it was quite profound. <laughs> he said, looked at me and he said, tell my people this. When I can walk in their garden, then they can walk in my garden. Now, I knew he'd said something profound. Now, you know that thing, you know, somebody said something profound, but you haven't quite got it. And I knew because of the power of which he said it. And I was pondering this, and I was pondering this, trying to get a handle on it. And, you know, when the Lord speaks to you, it's like his words, like, wash over you. And it takes you time to kind of steady yourself and think about just what he said. And um, then he said this, he quoted a scripture to me, Song of Solomon's 4.12, A garden enclosed is my sister, my spouse, a spring that is closed and a fountain that is sealed. And I thought, my goodness. Then he looked at me again and he said, tell them when I can walk in their garden, they can come here and walk in my garden. And when he said that again, everything went dim, and I was back in my office. I thought about that so much since then. See, God wants us to walk in that realm with him. He wants us to walk in the realm of the spirit. You know, we can have sovereign encounters with the Lord, right? That doesn't really mean much. Unsaved people can have sovereign encounters with the Lord, you know? Um, sovereign encounters, and it comes and it goes. But what God is after today is not just a sovereign encounter, he's after a walk in that realm with him. You know, we can have a sovereign encounter and nothing else for years and years and years and years and years or ever again. But that's not what God is after. We've got to move on from sovereign encounters and we've got to move on to walking in a consistent walk with him in that dimension. Sovereign encounters are usually like, you know, grapes from the promised land. If you, like, if you pursue this, that's what's out there and you can have it. Sometimes it's just an awakening to realize, whoa, this realm is real. You know, and you can walk in it, but... You see, you can't just decide you're going to step into that realm. You've got to seek, knock, ask, pursue it until you have a breakthrough. And there's no quick, easy method into it. You've got to seek, seek, ask, not be denied. You've got to keep pressing, you've got to keep pressing until you have a breakthrough in that realm. When it comes to you that way, then it's established in here. Growth takes place here. You have a space in here now which you can walk in it. Once you've done it once, you can do it again. Because it's established on the inside of you. The problem is getting the breakthrough. That takes a lot of pressure. Seeking, asking, knocking, not being denied. You know? You see, God's putting the people together today. Not just any kind of Christian, you know. People who are filled with the Spirit, walking in holiness. People who are able to hear the voice of God. And people who are able to obey, will obey at any cost. Are people who cannot be bought by fame or power or popularity. People who won't be put off by pressure from the enemy. You know, sometimes you have long, intense pressures from the enemy. At least we do sometimes. Real. And you can almost say, oh, you know, it's not worth it. But you keep going. He's looking for certain kinds of people. People that can't be sidelined with criticism. Come on, if you get hurt by criticism, you ain't going to make it. Not everybody's going to like you. Don't you know that? Even in church. It's life. Get over it. You know? 
can't be sidelined by trouble, criticism, tragedy. Sometimes tragedy comes in a person's life that knocks them out for years. <sighs> Looking for a different kind of people who have their eyes set on that mark, who will not be denied, who are going to walk in that realm, pure in heart. You'll see God, you see. Song of Solomon 4.12, a garden enclosed is my sister, my spouse, but the spring is shut up and the fountain is sealed. Solomon describing us as a garden, how God sees us. See? He says he wants to come and walk in our garden, but the gate is closed. He can't get in. Why? So Solomon goes on to describe the contents of the garden that God's looking for. He said, Song of Solomon 4.13, Your plants are an orchard of pomegranates. That is the main ingredient, the main plant or tree or fruit in the garden is pomegranates. You know, pomegranates in the scripture speak of love. Then out of this orchard, this huge orchard, come all the other spices. He said, your plants are an orchard of pomegranates, speaks of love, with, along with pleasant fruits like camphire, spikenard, saffron, calamus, cinnamon, with all the trees of frankincense and myrrh and aloes with chief spices. She's describing a garden. The prime fruit is pomegranates. There's a whole orchard of that. That's love. And if you start to become perfected in love, a lot of these other fruits begin to grow as well. And so he describes nine fruit of the Spirit there, beginning with love. Pomegranates, camphire, spikenard, saffron, calamus, cinnamon, frankincense, myrrh, alloys. So nine fruit of the Spirit described in Galatians 5.22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. You see, God is after fruit in order for us to walk with him in that realm.